Hi and welcome back. Um, as we learned uh, in the last video how to set up our computer as a router using Ubuntu server 14.04 uh, we got that all set up and uh, got webmin installed. We have uh, enabled our DHCP server and I showed you how to create a host uh, for static addressing and to create your subnet. Uh, but as promised, I said that uh, I would make another video showing you how to set up BIND DNS server, uh, also known as BIND9. Um, that way you can assign host names to the machines on your network. So let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, we'll go over here to servers and go to BIND DNS server. And uh, there's a few things we need to take a look at before we start defining our zones. Uh, there's a lot of options up here. You can go through and take a look uh, at what they are. Um, the main thing uh, that we want to take a look at is our forwarding and transfers to start off with. Uh, if you go in here, here is where you can put in either the DNS server IPs of your internet service provider or you can use OpenDNS or Google DNS. Uh, for this uh, video, I've put in Google DNS uh, primary and secondary servers. And uh, you can check this down here that says if your local DNS server is unable to perform a lookup, then it will uh, directly forward that to these IPs here, these DNS servers. So pretty much everything else can stay at default, but just be sure that you do assign a forwarding address uh, in here, and it's a good idea to have a primary and a secondary. And uh, we'll save that. Uh, you can look at your zone defaults. Here you can set uh, default refresh, expiry, transfer, and uh, negative cache times for your DNS records. Um, you can leave them at default, that's fine. Um, that's pretty much, uh, unless you're an advanced user with BIND, that's most of what you would need to worry about here. Um, addresses and topology. Uh, here we will tell the DNS server, if this is just for local use, uh, to listen on only the ports and addresses listed below. So we'll put this on port 53. That's uh, the port that DNS uses. Uh, there's a couple of others, but this is the main port. Um, and the address of your router, and ours, if you remember, is 10.1.10.1. .1 and uh, we'll go ahead and save that. Okay, uh, we've made a few changes, so let's go ahead and come up here and click Apply Configuration. And basically that will just restart the bind server and apply any changes that you made. Um, one other thing here is in the access control list. Here is where you can restrict uh, DNS lookup to uh, only certain addresses or uh, you can actually put in your network. So we could do 10.1.10.0 and that's a 24-bit network. And we can just give it a name. Let's see here. We'll call this, uh, these are trusted. That's gonna be our access control name. It's trusted to only these addresses. We'll save, and we'll go ahead and apply that configuration. Okay, so let's check our configuration real quick, make sure we don't have anything wrong. We'll click here. No errors were found. Okay, so we'll go back. If you want to uh, manually edit your file, you can go here to edit the config file, and you can pick in the drop-down which file you want to edit. Um, that's the name.conf. And you can just click on edit. It'll take you into that file. 
here you can see where it added our forwarding uh, DNS servers and our listen port and address. Okay, so uh, let's go back and let's go ahead and create our master zone. And this is going to be our forward zone. This means uh, any host name is going to be forwarded uh, using an A record to a certain IP address. So here we will go ahead and put in our domain or network which is router.com for this video. Uh, our master server is going to be ns1.router.com and that can be uh, ns1 or whatever the prefix you want followed by your DNS suffix which would be uh, your domain name. Uh, and we'll add that to our master server email address. You would just put in uh, your email here and we'll go ahead and check to use zone template and here you can uh, overrule uh, the default settings if you want to create different expiry times for each zone that you create and uh, we'll go ahead and add the reverses uh, for this as well and just click create okay so let's go ahead and apply that configuration and we'll return to our zone list and you can see our new zone is added here so we need to create a reverse zone now and we'll go through the same steps create master zone but here we will check reverse so in this case um, your reverse addressing is uh, basically, the way that that's looked at is you have your your uh, network IP, uh, which ours is 10.1.10.0, and it's going to be read in reverse. So you would take off the last digit, the zero, and flip it in reverse. So we would have basically the 10.1.10 and it adds a dot in dash addr dot arp that just performs a reverse lookup on your IP which would then translate an IP to a host name so our domain name on this one will be 10.1.10 since it's the reverse, we'll have the same master server, the same email address, we'll use the zone template. Okay, so let's just go ahead and create and apply and we'll go back to our zone list. Okay, so now we have our forwarding and our reverse zone created. Let's go ahead and go into our forward zone and we will add if you remember here in our DHCP server, whenever we created this, I told you uh, that we would go over this host name later, and that's what we're going to do now. And uh, so for Ubuntu.router.com, we gave that an IP address of .100. So back in our bind DNS server, in our forward record, we'll go to addresses. And our name is going to be that host name, ubuntu.router.com. And our address will be the .100. And let's go ahead and update the reverse. So this will add the reverse record automatically to our reverse zone we created. Just click Create. And we'll apply that configuration and return to our zone list. So now if we take a look at our reverse zone under addresses it automatically added the reverse zone for our new host. So now we need to also add our name server to our zone. So we'll go to router.com 
you see here our name server for router.com is ns1.router.com. So if we want to add that address, if we're wanting to do a lookup, we can just put here ns1.router.com and the IP of our router. We'll update reverse, click create, and apply. Okay, so now in our reverse addresses, we now have two records, and there is our name server, which is our router. Okay, so let's test this configuration uh, to see if we're resolving host names. We'll open up the terminal here, and we'll do a NS lookup for ubuntu.router.com. And as you can see, it's telling us our name server is at this IP listening on this port. And the lookup we performed results to this IP address. So our forward zone is working. So let's take a look. If we do an NS lookup on the IP of ubuntu.router.com, hit enter. Same information, this will always be the same for our primary DNS server. But it's here is the n-addr.arpa that I told you about. And it's saying the name, it's uh, ubuntu.router.com for this uh, address. So it's performing a reverse lookup, so everything's working properly. Okay, so... Uh, the easiest thing to do if you connect new computers to your network is uh, to come to your bind server, go into your forward, go into addresses, just put in the host name, IP of the computer you're adding, choose yes to update reverse and create, and don't forget to apply that configuration. And then if you want it uh, to have a static IP address, of course, since you're adding a host a host name for a specific IP, whichever IP address you put here for your host, go into your DHCP server and add new host. And you can just give it a description, put in your host name, uh, put in the MAC address of that device you're adding, and put in that same fixed IP address. And remember to leave as top level domain and create and you're set. Then uh, all of uh, your devices can be added to this subnet with static IP addresses, and each one can have its own host name on the DNS server, and it, you can perform lookups. So if you are wanting to know, oh, gosh, I, I can't remember the IP address of my laptop. Well, let's say you gave it uh, the host name of laptop.router.com, just open up a terminal, do an NS lookup for laptop.router.com, and it will return the IP address for that machine. So there you have it. That's uh, how to configure bind DNS server using Webmin uh, on your new Ubuntu router running uh, Ubuntu server 14.04. Until next time.